This is the Sean Kelly on Movies podcast for January 25th, 2021, featuring an interview with Stephen Kostansky about Psycho Gorman. Hello, and welcome to a rare weekly episode of the Sean Kelly on Movies podcast. So today I have an interview with uh, Stephen Kostansky about the film Psycho Gorman, which is now available on VOD. I should note before this interview that um, I did it over the phone and I noticed during the editing that the quality isn't the best. I uh, adjusted the levels so you can hear what's being said. Just I want to uh, apologize in advance for the kind of muffled sound. But this is a very good interview. I talk about the film. I don't really get into spoilers, though I do talk about some plot elements, which would be uh, fun to watch. And so it's probably best to watch the film before listening to the interview. But uh, here's my interview with Stephen Kostansky on PG Psycho Gorman. Uh, so um, how did you um, come up with the um, idea for um, uh, Psycho Gorman? Uh, well, I had a few ideas from the movie that were rattling around in my head for years that I didn't know what to do with. Um, one of them was, I had this image of a monster, like this hulking monster man, like sitting awkwardly at a drum set, and it just really made me chuckle. It was such an absurd image. And uh, yeah, one day I was watching the movie Rawhead Rex, and I started riffing on the idea of like, well, what if you took this core concept of like ancient evil gets resurrected um, and like on the world, but you mash that with another genre, uh, like something like a kid's adventure film, like what would happen? And so I started riffing on this idea of like, well, what if you had like the ultimate ancient evil like this alien warlord that's imprisoned on Earth. He's resurrected, but he's forced to hang around these little kids. Um, what kind of like weird adventures would they get into? And so I instantly fell in love with that concept. And the more I thought about it, the crazier the idea got, because I felt like those two genres were at odds with each other. So like kind of family-friendly kids movie, like an E.T. versus... Uh, the like kind of dark horror sci-fi fantasy genre. Um, so I just like playing around uh, with mashing the genres together and seeing what would happen, and that's where PG came from. So how did you really um, strike a balance between having such an evil character who is still um, likable in some way? Well, I found like the heart of the movie really came out of PG's relationship with Mimi and finding like, like once I settled on Mimi's character and her personality it all started to fit together because I needed characters that could stand up to PG I didn't want him to be the craziest character in the movie which is funny because like on paper he should be but he really isn't he's the straight man of the story and so with Mimi I wanted a character that could go to toe to toe with this ancient evil and not be phased by him. And so I was kind of drawing upon real life experience, uh, like kids that I know in my life, like relatives, like younger cousins, and then also like kids of coworkers uh, and their personalities, like partially inspired this because they were a little uh, like, I don't want to say crazy, but they're like a little more, um, I guess, bold. Uh, when you're young and you uh, haven't developed, uh, like, I guess the self-reflectiveness that comes with uh, being a teenager and that, like, self-doubt, uh, you know, kids are very confident, and I want to show that. And so Mimi is a very confident character, a very wacky character that can stand up to PG, and I think that helps inform his personality because he goes from being, like – basically a Saturday morning cartoon villain uh, to being the rotated straight man throughout the story who uh, just has to deal with being around 
this kind of obnoxious kid uh, day in and day out. And so I found that really informed the direction of his character and helped him grow into being not just a one note like villain, but a fully fleshed out person uh, that just happens to be the ultimate evil in the universe. So um, was it a challenge for you to find the right child actors for the lead roles? Yes, it definitely was a challenge. Like we cast a very wide net uh, in terms of our casting call. Um, there was a lot of concern early on uh, with the project that we wouldn't find the right kids for it. And like, you know, we were locked in, financed, and had a shoot date and everything. And the concern was like, well, what if we don't find the right kids? Like the movie doesn't work if we don't have the right kid actors. But luckily, like in our first round of auditions, uh, Nita submitted a self tape. And even though we saw like, I felt like hundreds of auditions after that, I kept coming back to her and kept getting her to send more tapes, do more auditions, try things like, you know, give her directions, try things differently. And I was so impressed, like, like she clearly knew what she was doing. Like she, she felt like an actor. She didn't feel like a kid that her parents were like feeding lines to. It felt like she took the job seriously. And that meant a lot to me because I knew that we were a low budget production and we didn't have a lot of time and resources we had to move fast and I didn't want to have to stress about like, like having a kid that was like out of their element and ha like just having to navigate that. Like I wanted, I needed a professional and I saw that with Nita and she took direction really well. And like with each subsequent tape and audition, she really like grew into the character and it helped that she already brought so much of that personality with her. Like, Nita will fully admit that she is is Mimi already in a lot of ways, which helped a lot. And so, yeah, the same goes for for Owen, who played Luke. Uh, like he was just such a such a professional when it came to his approach with the acting and his performance. Um, but uh, also just being like just a level-headed dude that I could converse with and you know, like took the work seriously, but also was not phased by anything. Um, and just gave Luke a like very subdued personality in a way that was interesting and didn't feel one note. Like I, I thought he was very charming uh, with the work he did on the film. So um, you mentioned the, the low budget. Um, so um, how did you typically go about designing the many creature effects on the film? Uh, I mean, I was very much inspired by uh, Japanese Super Sentai shows and um, like just a lot of Japanese uh, genre cinema in general. Uh, so, I mean, the North American version is, is Power Rangers, which I grew up on. It was very much uh, influenced by, but even stuff like Common Rider, which I, I've grown to appreciate over the years, as well as uh, like movies and things that still use that same kind of effect style. Uh, one I keep referencing is Mechanical Violator Hakider, which I love. Um, so I really want to emulate that style of creature design and execution where it's not so much about uh, realism. Like I was not concerned with making everything be hyper realistic and like convincing the audience that these were like somehow living creatures. It was more just a stylistic choice to make them uh, like look interesting and weird and have a lot of personality in their most static form uh, and and just make them unsettling in for some of them in how like immobile they were and giving them personality without having to have a lot of movement be involved in the way that uh, creatures in a lot of like Japanese monster movies and sentai shows uh, exhibit personality. It's like there's there's not a ton of animation in their movements, but their designs have so much flair to them that it like tells you everything you need to know about the character. And so I wanted to emulate that with the characters of PG. Now, um, when did you decide to actually have a, a Biocop cameo in the film? Uh, as I was writing it, it just like organically came came up as I was writing. Like, I I had reached a certain point in the script where I was like, I need to mix this up a bit. I want to seem like a good time to introduce a new character. 
And I knew that people, like there was fans out there that really wanted a Biocop cameo or, or just they were clamoring for a Biocop movie. So I thought, you know, I'll throw him into this movie and essentially give him his origin story and see what happens. Um, and kind of gauge the response off of that if I should do more Biocop stuff. Because I love the character and I'd love to do more stuff with him. And so this was just a fun excuse to throw him into the mix because, uh, you know, while I, I like struggle to find ways to give Biocop his own feature film, I think he fits as just a, like he's a good side character, let's put it that way. So I, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll throw him into this, use it as a way to gauge people's reactions to him. And uh, if people are into it, like I, I have other projects that you'd be involved in that I'd love to pursue. So it's, it's a bit of a like test run of Biocop to see how he goes over with the uh, general public. So um, do you prefer um, films that kind of go to horror comedy route or do you see yourself doing another um, dark and scary film like The Void? Uh, I like variety. I like doing all kinds of things. Um, I don't want my filmography to just be the same type of movie over and over again. Um, I would gladly, at this point, go and do another dark horror movie. I think it, it would be a fun change of pace because PG was such a like light and silly movie. Um, I, I definitely was uh, getting a lot of that out of my system that I had pent up while I was making The Void. Because uh, on that, I definitely was missing making things that were a little more lighthearted. So now that I've done that, I, I would return to that territory again. Uh, I think it would be fun. So, yeah, I, I mean, anything is possible. If the, if the story is good and uh, I like the characters, um, then, yeah, I'm, I'm open to any genre, really. So um, were you a bit disappointed when um, PG was, like, kind of sidelined by the pandemic and um... – what do you hope people take away from the film? Yeah, I was definitely saddened by the fact that we had to miss our premiere. I mean, it, we were supposed to have a world premiere March 13th, which is right when the pandemic really kicked into high gear. So we had to put everything on pause, which, you know, it really sucks. And it's disappointing not being able to have, like, a public screening. Like, oh, like we'll be able to do the festival run like you typically do with a movie. And, and watch it with an audience. Because this is definitely an audience movie. It's something I think you need to enjoy with the crowd. So that part has disappointed me for sure. But I am happy that it's finally able to come out and people are able to see it. And uh, I mean, I hope it reminds people of an era when movies, when we had a lot more variety in movies. It's the thing I feel like we're lacking right now. Um, in the streaming era, and I wanted to remind people of the video store era um, when they're, you know, every time you went to the video store was a new crazy adventure. You know, like picking out a movie was a was kind of a, an event in itself. And so I want the movie to, to maybe make people, uh, like, remind them of those times, of, of in my opinion, better times uh, for movies. So, yeah, yeah, I hope people take that away from the film. Okay, well, uh, thanks. Okay, uh, thank you very much for chatting with me. And that was my interview with Stephen Kostansky on PG Psycho Gorman. Uh, the film is now available on video on demand by Raven Banner in Canada and RLJE in the United States. And it will also be on Shutter at a future date. You can also get PG Psycho Gorman on limited edition Blu-ray DVD combo on March 16th. 2021 and uh we'll have uh, links in the show notes for all that and uh that's it for this episode of the sean kelly on movies podcast The Sean Kelly on Movies podcast is hosted and researched by Sean Patrick Kelly and is a production of skonmovies.com hosting music and transitions courtesy of anchor.fm you can subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and where else podcasts are hosted. 
Support us by joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash skonmovies or via Anchor FM listener support. This is the Sean Kelly on Movies podcast for January 25th, 2021, and I'll see you next time.